So let's talk about uh, just basic x64 registers and the ones that we need to know for this challenge. Okay, so um, the registers that are important here are, well, one of the ones you definitely want to be aware of, for example, is the RIP pointer. That's your instruction pointer. Okay, um, and so that's the pointer to the next instruction to be executed. Uh, RSP is the current stack pointer, so you've got registers and you've got a stack of information and essentially all the CPU is doing is popping things off of the stack, pushing them onto the stack, right? Grabbing information from memory. Now the important ones for this are RDI, RSI, and RDX. The order of registers used for parameters when you call like a method with x64 is the first argument is RDI, the second argument is RSI, the third argument will be in the register um, RDX. So let me give an example of that. And again, the challenge here in Call Me is to call methods. If a method were to look like this, we have some method int red, int green, int blue, let's say, that does something and then returns. Uh, in terms of the assembly and what we're going to be looking at, the method itself is going to have an address in memory, right? And it would expect red to be in RDI, green in RSI, and blue in RDX. So those are the default registers where we're going to find parameters for methods. And that's an important one here because it tells us down here that we're going to call a method and we need the first argument to be this and the second argument to be this and the third argument to be this. And if we get it right, essentially it just tells us what the flag is. So uh, the goal for this, when just looking at it without even examining the binary, is to, for call me one, call me two, and call me three, we're going to want to locate the addresses in memory of those methods. And uh, when we call those methods, we're going to want to make sure that dead beef, for example, is going to be in the RDI register because that would be the first argument and if we get the different strings that they're asking for into those registers then everything's going to check out and again just to reinforce this idea uh, the order of the registers used is RDI, RSI, RDX and so RDI would contain this dead beef string we're going to want RSI to contain this at the time we make the method call, and we're going to want RDX to contain this dude food string. Um, and we're going to see various return instructions in this assembly code. And the idea here is the return instruction, anytime we see ret in assembly code return, it's going to pop the top of the stack, and that address is going to be the return address for that method. So the return address for any method at the time that this ret call is made is whatever is on the top of the stack. So we're going to be stacking things up in order so that we kind of meet these requirements. And uh, just the final document I put together here in order to solve this challenge then, just looking at the directions, right? We need to figure out how to call three functions each with three strings that they are giving us. So we're going to call call me one with dead beef cafe babe dude food with R, you know and again that translates to RDI RSI RDX call me two same thing call me three and so we're going to need to overflow the final return pointer somehow we're going to have to figure out how to load up RDI R, RSI and RDX with these strings and uh, we're going to have to call each function in turn so how are we going to do this well we're going to find a gadget and a gadget it's just a method. It's just a series of instructions and a program that we can use to do things like populate registers. And that gadget will just load RDI, RSI, and RDX for us. And then uh, once we utilize that gadget to get these values into the right registers, then we can start calling methods and uh, we'll get our flag. And so step one is to prep our environment. We've already done that. And so step two is going to be to figure out how to overflow the return address at the end of this program. 
uh, and figure out what the overflow condition is. Very common thing to do here in a reverse engineering challenge, but I'm going to pause this video. We're going to move on to the next one, and we're going to start at step two where we just look at overflowing the return address. I think some of my students probably have a pretty good idea how to do that. That's a pretty simple, common step in these reverse engineering challenges.